Good morning, Pranab ji, Onkar ji, Mr. Saigal, and Tanya, and also all the, the participants here. Uh, so I'm representing uh, the orange uh, renewable power, uh, my, my, but my portfolio is most on the solar side. You know? So orange uh, right now almost like a one gigawatt and uh, most of the uh, dominating by the wind, you know, almost 800 megawatt. And solar we have done almost 200 megawatt. So for, as I'm on the photovoltaic uh, for a while, almost 25 years, you know, so I like to uh, give an emphasis most on the back end side, you know, right? We get the module, but how to get the module, you know, what will be the, the value additions has to be there, which is not existing as on today in India, you know? So 90% of the module, what we are importing uh, from China because of the, the tariff, what we are bidding very, you know, the low tariff to meet this requirement. But we have to see that uh, to make an India movement, how we want to have an, at least, you know, self-dependence. Uh, and I have a model like, you know, with the 10 gigawatt level of uh, installations, you know, what will be the kind of the investment on the value chain, you know, up to the module level, you know. So most of the things, you know, as a developer, we calculate uh, on the way forwards, you know, what will be our investment cost on the uh, developing, you know, uh, like uh, this year we'll be uh, completing worldwide like 85 gigawatt. So next slide. Okay, uh, if you look uh, into this slide, you know, this year's uh, overall uh, installations will be something like, you know, 85 gigawatt level. And uh, most of the, uh, if you see the installations will be in China, already they have completed 35 gigawatt this year. And by November, I think they will be adding another five gigawatt, you know. Uh, but overall, uh, the global installations, if you look into the, this year, it will be cross like 302 gigawatt. Uh, in India, uh, there is a setback, like, you know, we have a latest report, like uh, the cumulative is 13.6 gigawatt as per Seki report. And uh, this year, uh, it was supposed to be like a 20 gigawatt level could have been completed, but uh, because of the GST and the module cost, you know, there is a little setback, you know. So uh, when the developers, you know, uh, did the reverse bidding and the, they calculated like uh, the module price would be something like, you know, below 30 cents, it may be, you know, 26, 27 cents. But as on date, you know, uh, what we are getting is something like 36 cents poly, you know, uh, is a good tier one company, you know that we're getting. And uh, so uh, we have to see that uh, how we have to uh, mitigate the risk, you know, for uh, the future growth in India, you know. Next slide. Uh, in the value chain, if we look, you know, so that's why my focus is, you know, one is the polysilicon, uh, next is in the ingot, next is the wafer, cell and the module and the systems, you know. In the cell level, uh, India has got a capacity of 2.5 gigawatt. In module level, it is 5.7 gigawatt. Uh, cell manufacturing something like, you know, there are 12 manufacturers and uh, most of the first positions is that uh, the Adani power, you know, Adani solar the, in the Munda plant. And uh, they have got 1.2 gigawatt. And uh, I was there on the fifth and the 6th of September to audit their factory. It is a beautiful factory, one of the best, the state of art, uh, cell and the module manufacturing factory. And you can compare it anybody in the world in the Super League player like J, Jinko, you know, the Hanwha, QCell, anybody, you know, of them are Canadian solar. Uh, in the module level, you know, uh, we have got 5.7 gigawatt of uh, uh, the installation capacity. Mm, and out of them, 130 small module manufacturers and another 30 module manufacturers are in the installation stage, you know. So if you look into the uh, module stage, you know, uh, it's not like, you know, the big installations, you know. So in terms of the manufacturing, if you see, you know, if you have a, a doubling of your uh, production from the same capacity, you can reduce at least 20% of your manufacturing cost. That's called a Moore's law, you know. But unfortunately in India, you know, the installations are not in a gigawatt level except Adani, you know. So we have to address, you know, this kind of the issue in the manufacturing, you know. Next slide. 
uh, we have to see you know where uh, the polysilicon supply and what is this polysilicon in you know, a forecast you know in the polysilicon uh, one of the major supplier is called the GCL there on the top uh, there are several like OCI you know Walker Hemi and then uh, Jinko J in you know, all the you know top uh, five or six module players they have got their own polysilicon you know so therefore if India has to be on the polysilicon side, then uh, I will give a little bit, you know, on the inside of it, what is the kind of the technology and uh, in the value chain, what will be the kind of the cost, you know? Next slide. If you look into the value chain, once more, this is the, you know, the polysilicon, from the polysilicon, uh, you have to uh, make a casting, you know, casting means this is a kind of the ceramic crucible where you can charge something like, you know, 550 to 650 kg and then you have to make a, a kind of a, a bricks you know after squaring and then after slicing you have to make a you know kind of a wafer you know so wafer what we import you know from uh, china or uh, you know the uh, south korean uh, countries you know uh, the wafer cost of the poly as on date, you know, the average price is something like 65 cents, you know, and where you can generate uh, something like 4.55 watt with 18.7% efficiency, you know. So in this wafer, uh, we have to understand, you know, what is the a kind of the purity level of this wafer, you know. So this wafer is something like, you know, 200 micron, the thickness, like 0.2 millimeter, and uh, the size is like 156.75 millimeter by 156.75 millimeter. This is in square, you know. But these wafers are very delicate and this is a, a silicon grade material, you know. So next slide, you know. So uh, as you know, this wafer is coming, is, a, is a made of a, a pure silicon, but this silicon are of uh, solar grade, six level of impurities. Impurities means, you know, apart from the silicon, other heavy metals, what are the heavy metals, you know, and what is their purity level, you know? So this purity level, when we got a solar grade, like is a million level, you know, six, uh, you know, uh, level means million level of impurities and what is the different method that we produce, you know? So as you know, the silicon is, uh, is extracted from the sand. But if you look into the art, you know, the abundance of the silicon as an element is the second largest in the world, or the art is 18 percent you know, next to oxygen. You know, oxygen is 21 percent, you know. So abundance of the material, you know, you have to see, and there is a different form, you know, on the complex silicate, you know. But what we get, you know, from the sand is available in the, you know, seashore, you know, on the beach. So from the sand, we have to break it and make it a metallurgical grade silicon. And in the metallurgical grade silicons, there are uh, two process, three process steps. In, in fact, you know, one is called uh, semiconductor grade silicon, which is nine in impurity, which are readily available, you know, for semiconductor devices. Historically, when we started our photovoltaic journey in 93, you know, so those time, you know, we used to get an OPSPIC semiconductor grade silicon to make a solar cells, you know, and the solar module, you know. The next level is a solar grade, you know, which we just started, uh, you know, the manufacturing from 2005 onwards, you know. And uh, after that, you know, uh, we, there is a, another method, you know, where you can get a, a directly, you know, from the polysilicon to a wafer. There are a different methods, you know, from the molten conditions, you know. So I'll show you in the next slide, you know. Yeah, uh, one of the uh, polys, getting a polysilicon is that, you know, the classical process is the Siemens process, you know, this is universally accepted, but uh, the, the energy, it is very energy intensive, you know. So the next process is called the fluidized weight reactor, you know. These reactors, at least, you know, you can reduce your energy cost by 40%, you know. So this, but this kind of the industry, if you want to set up in India, you know, it will take about the two years time, you know, because, uh, but I'll say uh, in India, as uh, we can uh, do it, uh, you know, in a very, very uh, efficiently, as we have got a lot of steel plant and as a lot of, you know, oil refineries, you know. Next slide. So in the value chain, you know, we have seen the, that how the, from the polysilicon, how we get a, an ingot, you know, this is basically for multi wafer we have shown, you know. First of all, you know, polysilicon, you melt it and then, uh, 
uh, after uh, um, uh, you know melting you have to have a you know a kind of a crystallizations you know so this crystal, after the crystallizations what you do you take out the crucible then you square it and uh, after the squaring like 156.75 by 166.75 these are called the bricks from the bricks you uh, make a, a kind of a, a wafer or slicing you know so this polysilicon the whole the process in the value chain get the wafer you know so there is an inspection process as well in the next slide you know so the wafer what you get you know this is also explained you know i mean like uh, there are the different process like uh, what is that it is called uh, mostly what he talk is the poly but the first one on the slide is called the mono you know so the mono is called you know is called a jokrolskis method you know this is a crystal growth process mostly on the metallurgical uh, grade silicon uh, grade and you get it a kind of a very high pure uh, silicon but when what have happens you know it grown with the seed crystals and it grows is very very slowly and at the same time it's rotates you know so by default you get a very you know round seven figure you know maybe uh, this is like a 8 inch you know silicon ingot and from there you make a square and you cut the uh, a different you know portions and you get a, an off square which is called a pseudo square you know the next one is called the poly and the the third one is called you know how we squaring you know next level next uh, okay this also you know uh, has given an uh, idea what is a called the monocrystalline the polycrystalline in material how you get it but you get a module you don't know you know what is the material inside of it you know next yes so after getting the wafer you know so there is a quality of the wafer how you understand that the this quality will be good you know so there are different inspections means the one is called the geometry like 156 by 156 mm then if there any kind of a micro crack you know which is not visible in the naked eye you know you have to have an uh, maybe el inspections as well you know and also in the surface imperfections means there are some maybe you know the fingerprint or any kind of the dirt on the surface which has to be you know uh, rejected you know is not a good quality finally you know uh, you have to check the thickness as well the resistivity as well as the lifetime of the whole uh, carriers you know which are in the, of the order of uh, 1.5 you know uh, microseconds you know next slide so this is a kind of a you know technology tree you know mostly what we talk about uh, the polycrystalline and uh, the monocrystalline you know so initially i have given a, a kind of a slides you know to understand what is a, a mono and the poly so in the poly you know what is called a the standard process is called aluminum bsa process back surface field you know which is there and the the other one is called the pers passivated rare emitter contact you know cells in the mono uh, there are uh, two types you know mono when you dope it you know it's called a p type with the boron it's called a p type or the deficiency of an electron or it acts as a positive charge carrier you know so there are two types and n type in n type what happens if you dope with the phosphorus you know it's called a n type there is a negative charge carrier so there are two types of you know on the polarity basis there are wafers so one is called p type and the another is n type you know so after that you make a either is a aluminum bsa process or the prc from the device point of view the most important for the the last one is called the biofacial you know so far what we talked is a monofacial means when we put our module on the sun that it generates electricity on the one side it's called monofacial you know but the future generations what we are talking in the future technologies is called the biofacial means on the back side the diffuse component which is called the albedo effect you know what is the diffuse component and how much you generate you know from the back side i have got some slides i know you can you go to the next slides yeah uh, this is a classical standard aluminum bfsa process you take the wafer and then uh, from the wafer as you know this is a completely smooth but uh, you have to have a, a you know absorb the sunlight so what do you do you create a kind of a micro pyramids on that through the chemical etching process you know if it is a mono so what you do is a alkaline texturization machines you know it makes a small micro pyramids if it is a poly then it is called a acid texturization cell. so normally it is a hf h no 3 process you know it is a very very you know a a, a very uh, most important process to understand what is a uh, you know what is the reflectance of the whole surface that your idea is to absorb maximum sunlight through the texturization of you know, this process you know 
Next level it goes is called a PN junction. So solar cell is nothing but it's called a PN junction. So you know, basically the, we take a PTI wafer and we create a negative junctions through the phosphorus, you know. And these junctions are very, very low, or something like in you know, a 0.25 micron level, you know, and wafer thickness is uh, itself is, a, is a, uh, only, only 0.25, uh, 250 or 200 uh, micron level, you know. So very, very shallow junctions what we create. After that, we, uh, when you do deposit a phosphorus, it creates a phosphosilicate glass as an insulating layer. So we put into the, you know, HF bath, which is a little phosphosilicate glass is removed. Then after that, what you do, we uh, deposit a anti-reflection coating in anti through the silane, you know, it's a kind of a silicon nitride deposition. So the so idea is that, you know, to absorb maximum of the sunlight, you know, when it is in the, in the sun, you know. Next we go, to, so far we have created, no, no, uh, uh, can you uh, this is a junction, you know. Can you wind up in a minute or so? Uh, yeah, yeah, another more. two minutes, yeah. you know. Okay. So next level we go, so far it is a create a, a PN junctions, but we have to have a metallization, means negative and the positive terminal, you know. So these are the uh, circuit it has shown. Next we go to the next slides. Huh? Yes, uh, now in the technology level, you know, uh, as you see that what is the, in a label like, you know, thin film share is very, very low than, in the crystalline modules, so there is PTI, wind type, and a mono and multi. This is so a kind of a, you know, the overall uh, today's, uh, you know, the structure, and then in the future, what, how much it will go. Next level, next slide. So this is in the crystalline silicon. You know, uh, mostly it is dominated by multi, multi, uh, you know, wafer or the cells and the modules, and then mono is uh, is a low, but. Uh, it is taking to be by 2018, you know, like, you know, 45 to 50 percent share uh, of the mono through the PRC and the other device structure. Next. So this is a kind of a, you know, shop flow label of the a typical, you know, the module manufacturing, you know. Next. Well, uh, this module said what we understand you know, that uh, that should work for 25 years, but how do you understand that this will work for 25 years, you know? So it goes through an accelerated test, you know, through the damp heat, thermal cycling, and humidity freeze. These are the three critical process, you know? And uh, it has been shown that if the power level is less than 5% than the initial measure, you know? So then that will work, means 25 years. So that's why, you know, if you see that data sheet of a module, like 80% after 25 years, you know, with the degradation, initial year, the first year is 2.5% because of the LID, and the subsequent year is 0.7%. Next slide. So this is also a kind of a different mechanical load test, you know, the different tests that we conduct through the reliability process. Next. This is a, you know, typical figure of a, a front side of the module and the back side. Next. Uh, one of the important part, you know, so far what we are talking is a, you know, tedler based module, but in the future, you know, it will be a, a glass, glass module, you know, some of the manufacturers already, you know, producing glass, glass module. Next. This is a typical, you know, glass, glass module structure and how you mount it, you know, those therefore different with the aluminum, without uh, aluminum frame, you can do it, you know, and you can have a, a three different junctions as well, you know, next. Uh, this is also, you know, uh, how to handle in this kind of a glass glass module without breakage, you know, so that it doesn't create any kind of a you know, damage on the, you know, on the edges, you know, and how the installations will be the glass glass module. Next. Uh, this is the important part where we, I'm talking about the bifacial cell, you know, in the front side generations as well on the back side generations, you know. Next slide. Typically, you know, if it is in a rooftop or anywhere, and if it is a, you know, very reflecting surface, you know, so you can generate up to 40% more power from the rear side, you know. So these are the kind of the installations for the future that we are looking for, you know. Next slide. Well, uh, this is a, you know, the, the conclusion is as on today, you know, what is the different price level uh, that we get it, you know, from the Chinese market, you know. But my uh, model for make in India is that, you know, today we are lacking on the polysilicon, on the ingot, and on the wafer side, you know, these are the, the three major areas, you know, if I take a model of like 10 gigawatt level, you know, and for each megawatt, what is the investment cost? I have this number, you know, if you add up the, all these things, you know, and on the cell level, there is a deficiency of 7.5 gigawatt on the module level, 4.3 gigawatt. You add up all these things, you know, so something like, you know, 47,500 crore to be invested for making making India movement at it at the first level. But mind it, for polysilicon, it takes two years time, you know. When I visited, you know, Adani Power uh, the, on the month of September, and I had discussions with the Mohan, Mohan Narayan, you know. The, so 
in 2018, they are going to operate on the wafer slicing side. And in, by 2020, you know, they will be making something like uh, at least two gigawatt level of the polysilicon plant in Mundra. You know, so one of the, uh, you have to see from the environmental point of view, this kind of the plant is not only take the lot of energy, but it has to be, you know, it emits a lot of, you know, uh, toxic gases, which has to be handled, you know, properly. So there should be in a remote location. So like Mundra or this kind of the, the place where it will be the ideal locations for future. Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen. If you have any questions later on, you can ask me. Thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Gautam Samantha, uh, this Make in India, as we all know, is a very important part which uh, we should discuss uh, a little more in uh, detail uh, because we have been talking about it but not uh, done much and there is a lot that can be done. There is no doubt on that. <laughs> and no, so these small steps will not help. You know, some small custom duty here and some anti-dumping duty, that will not help. We have to give a package. 